So really, we're here today to just share information about the purpose, eligibility, and parameters of the program. Uh, we'll share a little bit of information from our current, um, and that would be 2021, uh, and past recipients. And we're going to review the application package documents and um, talk about some of the required documentation um, that's, that's part of uh, our application. All right, next slide, please, Andrew. Great. Uh, so this iteration of this grants program uh, was launched in 2016 uh, to offer assistance to eligible applicants for significantly reducing waste or increasing the diversion of recover recoverable materials that would otherwise come to the Franklin County Sanitary Landfill. So it's it's really just specific to materials um, that would be coming to this landfill or to the landfill that Swaco owns and operates. And it's designed to provide funding to assist with establishing or expanding programs and services um, while emphasizing partnership building and collaboration. Um, and this program serves really as catalyst to support unique programs and projects that align with our program of work uh, and helps to establish and develop programs that can be modeled um, or replicated throughout the district. Okay, next slide, please, Andrew. Uh, and so in terms of applicant eligibility, this, this is a competitive grant program. Uh, so applications are weighted against each other and evaluated by an internal SWAPA review committee. Uh, our committee is made up of representatives from uh, SWACO's legal, finance, uh, and, and innovation and programs departments. And so in order for an application to be evaluated by our review committee, there are some fundamental criteria that must be met. Uh, and that is that the program activities must occur in the 2022 calendar year. Applicants that are eligible to apply uh, for this grant program include government and agencies, communities, schools, parks, and nonprofit organizations. So private uh, for-profit businesses are not eligible to apply under this grant program. Uh, and then also the applicant and the project must be located in Swaco's jurisdiction. So our jurisdiction is comprised of all of Franklin County um, and includes the cities of, of Dublin, Westerville, New Albany, Reynoldsburg, and Canal Winchester. Um, Sharon Township is also within our district. And so this map that you see shows uh, Pickerington and parts of Lithopolis, but they're outside of our jurisdiction since the majority of these communities are outside of Franklin County. Next slide, please, Andrew. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is a competitive grant program. Applicants may apply for a minimum of $500 and a maximum of $35,000. And the important thing to remember with this is that a 25% cash match is required. Um, and, and the activities that are identified as part of the match must relate back to the proposed waste reduction activities that are contained in your grant proposal. Next slide, please. So we have four project categories that we've identified under this program. They include waste reduction and reuse, food waste diversion, recycling, and enhanced public awareness. And um, a lot of times we take a more hands-on approach to the outreach and the education activities with our grant recipients. Um, and so applicants can choose to implement activities in one or more of these categories. However, implementing more of these areas does make for a more dynamic project. So that said, outreach and education is, is always a part of our awarded projects. So if the projects are missing an outreach and education component, we'll advise that it be included and and work with our applicants and our recipients to provide uh, technical assistance in terms of the best ways to reach your participants, 
with clear and consistent messaging. Um, and it's a great opportunity for, for us to help cultivate sustainable projects and partnerships and to learn from our recipients. That's a really important aspect of this program for us. Uh, we, we really um, appreciate the opportunity to work closely with our recipients and hearing about their successes and their challenges and ways that um, we might be able to help them implement these programs that are successful and sustainable. Uh, so eligible uses of funding under this program include uh, costs associated with diversion equipment, supplies and materials, and professional services. So the pictures on this slide are from um, our project with Local Matters in 2020. They were awarded funding for an in-vessel composting unit, but we also partnered with them to offer an informational webinar uh, on shopping smart to reduce food waste, and then also developing outreach materials focused on food waste prevention and composting. And so this is a nice example of a project that um, we partnered with a recipient on, on closely. Okay, Andrew, next slide, please. To date, we have awarded 44 projects through this program supporting a variety of waste reduction, reuse, recycling, uh, composting, and outreach and education initiatives. Next slide, Andrew. So the chart on the left shows the various activity types that have been funded um, since launching the program. And you can see that the majority are, are recycling and food waste diversion related. Uh, but we've also awarded a number of activities that were um, explicit to outreach and education or waste assessments and studies. And so those are activities that um, can also be uh, eligible. The pie chart includes data from 2020 on the types of organizations that received funding. So in 2020, we had awarded 16 applications. Um, we had 19 apply. We awarded 16. Two, unfortunately, were canceled due to, due to the pandemic. Um, so we have a total of 14. Uh, we had um, three focused on recycling, three focused on outreach education and awareness, uh, five focused on food waste diversion, and three focused on reduction and reuse. Next slide, please, Andrew. So these are our 2021 recipients, and um, we ended up awarding 15 this cycle. This uh, included six communities, one school district, and seven nonprofit, seven nonprofits, and one government agency. And so there's a, a nice sampling here of um, community recycling and food waste diversion programs, as well as um, school uh, curriculum development. Next slide, please, Andrew. Oh, I'm sorry, can you go back one? Um, nonprofit uh, for reuse and donation. Um, and um, other other nonprofit and public entities as well. So we ended up awarding just over 224,000 for the 2021 grant cycle. Next slide, please, Andrew. Thank you. So in terms of eligible use of funding, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, this section, um, so funding requests can be made for, again, equipment, supplies, and or professional services. Um, in terms of the equipment, we want to see uh, durable, reusable equipment to be used for waste reduction, reuse, recycling, and composting. Um, we have awarded funding for solid waste containers if they are part of a what we would refer to as like a disposal station. And so that would include a recycling can with the landfill container or a composting can with the or with the landfill container. And so, um, you know, again, we wanna see reusable containers, signage, um, and then processing equipment has also been um, awarded in the past. The signage, we wanna work with recipients closely on uh, in helping to, them to develop signage that aligns with best practices that we have researched and we recommend. And so um, if you're awarded dollars for this, <clears throat> there's a section in the grant agreement that will require a recipient to provide examples of signage to us in advance so that we can 
um, provide feedback um, and, and have the ability to kind of weigh in before that's printed and placed. Uh, and then in terms of supplies, this could be for education, outreach, and awareness activities. Um, these sh should focus on reuse, recycling, diversion, or composting. Um, and then with these, we ask that a description of the materials and their intended uses uh, with the pricing be provided with the application. And then in terms of professional services, um, we have awarded contractual expenses uh, relating to the provision of waste reduction and diversion consulting or planning services. This also includes the transport of recyclable or compostable materials or fees that are related to the acceptance of these materials at a licensed facility. Uh, what we would require here would be a scope of service describing the services to be re rendered, uh, including qu quotes and rates with that um, and then if it's something if it's a professional service that's um, being proposed for the purposes of like a waste assessment or a study we would require a copy of the uh, resulting plan or report to be submitted with the the final report at the conclusion of the grant period um, and then you know we just can't say enough that that, that we want these programs to be sustainable, working towards increased diversion with measurable impacts. And so um, when we when I start covering um, parts of the application, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. But again, the sustainability and long-term social, economic, and environmental benefits of a project should be emphasized. And um, if it's a program that only occurs once or, or doesn't describe the sustainability benefits, it might, be, it might not be graded as highly when it's evaluated against other applications that create an ongoing impact. That's not to say that we won't fund pilot programs or we haven't fund pilot programs, but, but the intent really is to be able to develop these replicable programs that others could implement um, to increase diversion over the years. Next slide, please, Andrew. Hey, Christy, I have a question related to um, this slide that we're on right now. Yeah. Uh, Corey, Corey asks, uh, the question, installation of specialized equipment would fall under professional services, correct? Can you talk a little bit about installation costs? Yes, so, so we, will fund equipment if it is equipment that is going to reduce the waste stream, right? So maybe um, a baler or a compact or something along those lines that it will help increase recycling, reduce the material sent to the landfill. We do not cover installation costs as part of the grant program. Does that answer the question, Corey? It does, and really just that, you know, those the equipment issues, installation issues, things like that are sometimes a little tricky in terms of kind of working through what's eligible and what's not. So those, are, if you're talking about, if you're thinking about equipment, you know, those are good conversations to have with us um, before you finalize your application. Yeah. Definitely. Very good question. Okay, Andrew, so if you could, thank you. Yeah, and, and, and this slide is um, just lists some of the, the ineligible um, uses of funding that we've identified under this, this program. And so, you know, we do not provide funding for the same program activities that were previously awarded under a SWACO grant. Um, so if, if you've applied for and received a grant in the past, uh, you, can, you can apply again, just not for the same activities. Um, also funding for in-house personnel costs, overhead or indirect costs, um, general office supplies, uh, service, any service relating to the disposal of trash, uh, hazardous waste, um, and um, any type of equipment relating to those specific materials uh, are ineligible. And then services um, that support existing diversion activities. So for example, if if you're already paying to have your recycling picked up, uh, you couldn't ask for those for those costs or services as well. 
And then lastly, a really important one to remember is if your grant application is approved, any expenditures that are made prior to both parties signing the grant agreement, we cannot reimburse for. And so um, I can provide a little bit more clarity with that in a couple of slides. Next slide, please, Andrew. Christy, associated with this slide, uh, just a question for you sure. to maybe expand upon. Uh, if somebody wanted to do a pilot project for an activity, they're like, okay, this is something we want to pursue. We'd like to kind of pilot it first. And then if they wanted to come back to say, well, that worked out and we've you know, worked out the details, now we want to expand it to a full scale program is, you know, would, would those that kind of a process be eligible? Yes. It would be eligible. Um, expanding programs and services is eligible. Um, and so, yes, dollars could be asked for, for just for the expansion piece of it. Thank you. And then a specific question that just came in is, <clears throat> if a project focused on school composting of cafeteria waste, um, would composting service be an eligible expense and after the grant period how have schools continued to fund composting services yes yes so we've we've composting services again if it's a service that you're not already not already paying for those would be eligible um we only have one example of a district that has received funding for the implementation of uh, composting services and that was Hilliard City Schools and uh, in 2018 they received grant dollars to um, implement cafeteria food waste composting uh, and recycling at all of their uh, elementary schools and their two sixth grade schools and so they received that funding because they were able to um, also show that the district had dollars and had committed to funding those services um, and costs beyond the grant funding year. And so that is something that we ask you to identify in the application uh, in terms of making your programs and projects sustainable as, you know, how are you going to fund these services beyond the grant funding year? Um, and so uh, they were able to, to show that. Um, as with most school districts during the pandemic, they um, stopped those services um, for a period of time until you know everybody gets back in school. Uh, but but that is one thing that we look at closely and we, and we want for you to identify in terms of how you can sustain your program activities beyond the grant funding year. And I think Amber, just you know, to your very specific question, is that these schools have just. Um, incorporated it into their operating expenses um you know the goal on a lot of these programs for us as we fund them is that if we can see greater diversion there is a possibility then to reduce the amount of service on the trash side so maybe you know a little bit uh, less frequent schedule of collections of trash possibly um, to offset the cost of you know doing for instance food waste compost so we, you know part of the goal with you would be to see if we can find ways to offset the cost of service, but it's just an important point that there has to be a commitment uh, in the long run that a program will be sustainable and that includes kind of fiscally sustainable. So another really good question and something we would love to kind of talk to you one on one about uh, moving forward. Yeah, definitely, Amber, if you're with a school and, and you're interested in that, uh, we have a lot of learnings in terms of school recycling, school food waste diversion. We've we've piloted programs. We've we've been a grant recipient of WWF funding for um, food waste diversion purposes and pilot projects. And so um, we do have a lot of learning under our belt. And I would I would love to talk with you more about that. Okay, Andrew. So yeah, you know, I threw this in here because sometimes we receive very well-intentioned applications where an applicant has proposed recycling a material that is not accepted for recycling locally. Um, and so we can also provide technical uh, expertise and guidance on that as well. But, you know, so for example, cups and straws, um, a lot of times people think those are accepted as part of our local recycling programs and those materials are not. And so while we we love the ambition and the creativity, it, it also has to be feasible. 
Um, and so this um, image uh, shows you what is accepted for recycling um, in our district typically and, and what is not. And um, I, should, I should say it does depend on where the material is going. And so if you are a nonprofit um, and you are contracting with someone, you know, a commercial hauler to take it somewhere, it is important to understand um, where that material is being taken because some of these items may not be accepted at other locations. Um, these really are for materials that are going to the Rumkey Material Recovery Facility. And so there are a few other material recovery facilities in Franklin County that, that may not be accepting all of these items. And we can help um, help you determine, um, you know, what they're accepting if, if that becomes a challenge for you. And the only other thing I'll point out here is just that Rumkey um, in 2021 started accepting uh, plastic uh, tubs. And so in the past, it just used to be limited to plastic bottleneck containers. And now uh, they are they have expanded that to plastic tubs. So that was great news. Okay, Andrew, next slide, please. Hey, Christy, one more quick question before we move mm -hmm. on. Uh, I actually think it's a kind of a complicated question, but um, Christina asks, could the 25 match go towards staff services? I know the grant cannot fund it, but could that be part of the organizational match? And I, I know that part of the answer is going to be specifically what are we talking about when we talk about staff services, but why don't, why don't you take it, give, give, give the best answer to that, to that question? Sure, sure. So um, typically we do not like to do it that way. That said, um, there have been one or two projects where the recipient is is the expert or is the one that can provide the in-house um, personnel services the best. And, and, and so the, the example I'll use is COSI. And so they had received dollars to um, implement waste and recycling disposal stations throughout the museum. And they were very specific in terms of how they wanted these containers built and their um, guidelines for branding and how it was to be done. And so we allowed them to use a portion of um, in-house staff personnel expenses um, towards their 25% match, but it was just a portion of it um, so that they built these stations in-house and, and, and diverted some of those towards that 25% match. And I, I'm trying to think, I can't recall what the other one was. Typically, it's not something that we that we do. Um, that said, I'm I'm always here to talk. Um, and and if you want to reach out and set up a time to talk more about it, I'm happy to do that. Yep, yeah, I think that's 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 great. And um, it's more likely to be something that could be eligible if, as Christy was pointing out, if if the staff has some kind of specialized uh, expertise. Um, but just follow up with us, Christina, and let's let's talk about the specifics. Okay. Yeah, so then uh, this slide really, I just wanted to point out that um, so single use items, even if it is a recycling bag, or even if it is a compostable bag, ultimately those things are going to be disposed of. And so um, grant dollars do not provide funding for those types of single-use uh, items. Okay, Andrew, next slide, please. So in terms of the application requirements, the deadline to submit, um, again, is August 6th uh, by 5 p.m. Um, we, we do not contact applicants to request missing information, and so just making sure that you've got everything that um, is required is, is really important. And we've got a little checklist that you can also use to make sure that uh, you haven't forgotten anything. Um, but again, I mean, I, I can't stress enough that I am here to talk and meet with everyone uh, prior to this deadline. Uh, there is a, um, uh, you can submit draft applications for review. They don't have to be complete. Um, but those can be submitted by July 2nd, and I'm happy to review those and, and provide 
uh, comment as well. Uh, and then um, just some other requirements. The application must be submitted by the entity responsible for implementing the project. So um, consultants, contractors, vendors, or um, unaffiliated individuals may not submit on behalf of the entity responsible for implementing the project. Uh, and then funding requests for, uh, we already talked about this, but for expanding or improving an existing um, project there are acceptable, but um, we're gonna be looking for a, a detailed explanation of like the current activities and how funding uh, for expanding them would, would improve the program or the project. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, applicants should not have any financial, um, uh, outstanding financial uh, or compliance issues. Okay, Andrew. So we are we are over halfway through this. Now now I'll focus on the actual application package itself. And so um, we have three forms that make up our application package. Form A is our cover page, um, and that just really includes kind of a snapshot of the project information and the organization itself. Project B is the summary and narrative document. Um, and that's going to be the bulk of everything. And then Form C is the is the budget request. Uh, and so um, they should be hopefully very easy for you to kind of go through and um, follow along. So so yes, here's the cover page. And again, it's really just going to ask for the applicant's contact information. Um, and then there's a, a certification section that should be signed by the person responsible for submitting the application and certifying that the information provided is, is true and accurate. Next slide, please, Andrew. So uh, Form B, um, again, a large part of your application will be evaluated um, you know, based on the content in this area. This is where the bulk of your information is going to be. Uh, the project summary and the narrative includes um, an executive summary, which should be no more than two pages, and a project narrative consisting of, um, I think it's 21 questions uh, for our 2022 application. So we tweak the application every year, just kind of based on feedback and um, our, our, our program of work, really. Um, by and large, it stays the same, but, but um, it's not exactly the same year after year. And so um, the executive summary should summarize the project in its entirety and provide an overview of the answers uh, in the narrative um, that are being asked. And uh, this, is, this is your opportunity to explain why your project should be selected for funding. And then the narrative section, if you just provide your answers uh, in the order that the questions appear, that would be great. And so right now the, the application is is in a PDF on our webpage if you haven't already downloaded it. Unfortunately, it is not a fillable PDF. Um, so I, I can also send it to you in a Word document if you prefer to uh, complete it that way. Uh, but the project narrative should be five pages or less um, and they can be provided on separate sheets. And we're just really looking for you to clearly describe the goals and the object objectives of your project um, and to tell us how you're going to measure the impact of your program. Uh, we're also asking questions that relate to the transferability um, of, of your project activities and how they're going to be sustained. Uh, and um, yeah, if there are any collaborative partnerships that um, exist or will be formed as a result of this project if uh, jobs are being created. Um, those are all questions that are included as well. And so, um, yes, you can read through those. If you have any questions about that, please do not hesitate to shoot us an email or give us a call. Okay, Andrew. And then, thank you. Form C is the project budget. And so, um, this is where you have your opportunity to demonstrate sound fiscal management and provide a realistic budget um, with a justified need for the financial request is 
uh, really what we're going to focus on here. And so applicants are required to itemize um, all of the grant items and associated costs. And so uh, we want you to please identify if the cost is part of the grant request. So that's column A. The 25% required minimum contribution, that's column B. Uh, and the dollars that are being contributed by the applicant, uh, which is column C. And then we've got column D, uh, where you will total all of those together. Um, and so the cash contribution is 25% is of the total grant amount funding that's being requested. Um, and the example that we have, uh, for example, is in the first row, um, we use just you know $10,000 in grant funding is being requested. The required match is 2,500, 25% of the requested grant funds. And then the total project cost is, is 12,000. 500. Now, oftentimes applicants will exceed the match. And so that's what you see in the second row, an example of um, where they've exceeded the match that's required. You don't have to. It, it, it has no bearing on um, how well you score. Um, some, some folks just like to include that. Okay, Andrew, next slide, please. And so um, we also have a budget summary that's required, uh, and uh, it should just describe, you know, each item that you've requested and how it will be used in the project. Uh, here you can also request 50% upfront funding, uh, and so we're looking for you to provide sufficient just justification um, that can that can be described in your budget summary um, in terms of why those dollars are needed and how you'll use them. And so if, you're, if your project is awarded funding uh, and the request to receive upfront funding approved, you'll be asked to submit an invoice um, and also documentation showing that you have 25% of that 50% payment available. Um, and then once we've received that uh, invoice and that documentation, we will issue you a check and we like to do that very early on in the in the uh, project um, that's been awarded and so if the upfront payment is not requested then we'll just reimburse the award recipient for 100 percent of the grant approved expenditures um, providing that all of the required documentation has been submitted uh, and provided in the final report all right, next slide, please, Andrew. Thank you. So yeah, this is the application checklist. This is just for you to use if you choose to um, draft an application just to kind of make sure you haven't forgotten anything. This does not need to be submitted with the application. Next slide, please, Andrew. Um, the other thing that, that we really like to do with our, our grant recipients is, is work with them to, to tell the story and, and um, all of this great work um, that, that you've been accomplishing and will accomplish as part of your grant award. We're available to attend board meetings and speak, um, provide quotes for news releases and a newsletter. Uh, we always do a press release at the beginning uh, of, of our grant um, after we've selected our award recipients. Uh, we're, we're available to participate in media interviews, and by we, I mean Hannah Greer-Brown, she's our, our communications manager. She heads a lot of this up for us. Um, we love touring facilities um, to see how you're implementing um, and spending these grant dollars. We are also able to share information about your grant project on social media uh, and available to review um, any materials that you develop. Um, in advance of, of rolling those out to the public. Okay, Andrew, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so these are just some important dates um, in terms of our timeline uh, you want to be aware of. And uh, July 2nd, as I had mentioned earlier, that's when if you want to submit a draft application for review and comment, just have those to me by then, please. August 6th is our deadline. August through December is, is when our evaluation committee convenes to um, review and score all of the applications that we receive. 
um, if, if, if we need clarity or have questions, that's also the time that we reach out to applicants to um, get those responses. In December of each year, we, we let everyone know if their uh, project has been selected for funding. And then in January of each year, we early January, uh, we will have an informational meeting for our grant recipients to kind of walk everyone through the process in terms of executing a grant agreement and um, um, expectations and deliverables and, and um, how we're able to help with that. And then uh, our goal is always to have these projects commence in January as well, um, but, but they can't commence and grant dollars should not be spent again until both parties have signed the agreement. Okay, Andrew. Thank you. So yeah, these are these are the email uh, addresses that you can use. Um, if you send it to grantsatswaco.org, there'll be several people that will that will see it. Um, if you send it to me, that's that's fine. Um, next um, week, I will be on vacation though, so um, it, it might it might be best to send it to grantsatswaco.org during during that time. Uh, and we would just really appreciate everyone joining us today and for your patience. We apologize for the technical difficulty in the beginning. Uh, and we still have about 10 minutes left. We're happy to answer any more questions if you have any. I don't think I can see the questions, Andrew, so I'm sorry. I'm going to rely on you again. It's fine. I am monitoring here and patiently waiting. Um, surely there's a question or two out there. Um, and of course, if not, um, you can always get in contact with us after the presentation. Uh, can we get a copy of this presentation? See, I knew there was a good question out there. Mm -hmm. uh, Christine Mills, we will make sure to uh, typically we Post it on our web page, uh, I believe. So, Christy, how how we're going to handle it this time? <laughs> yeah, great question. So, I think what I'm going to try and do, I can certainly. Um, I think I will have to send it out in a PDF because it will be too big otherwise. I think, um, and so we can certainly send it out to everybody in a PDF, and then I'm going to have to. I will edit it down, so we'll cut out the the first half of that. Well, not the first half, but. The first part of it um, and then also make the reporting available online as well and so um, we'll make sure that you get a link to that as well yeah, good point i forgot we're doing that so this is actually being recorded so you could uh, we'll maybe we'll cut out all that technical difficulties at the beginning of the presentation as well yes. um, and so we'll have the the streamlined version available online we have another really good question um, and that is uh do any of the details for previous recipients become public for us to view? Um, and as in, can we view their application? And so um, we are happy to share the details. Uh, I'll, Chris, we let you answer as well, but we're certainly happy to, to, to share the details. A lot of times, when we, that's really one of the most important reasons, I think, to get in contact with us as you're thinking yeah. about a project, because we might have some examples, some parallel examples where we can talk about how it was handled, what was funded, what wasn't funded and so forth. So the answer generally is yes. Um, Christy, why don't you chime in yeah. as well? Yeah, no, absolutely. And 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 yeah, sometimes the 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 project ends up looking, you know, a little bit different from, you know, what was proposed in the application. And so um, it really just depends. Sometimes we will share the application with someone or sometimes we'll share the final report. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, absolutely. We can we can make those available. And, and if you reach out to me and, and provide me with a little bit more detail in terms of what you're thinking, um, I can narrow it down uh, in terms of what what projects would be similar um, for you to to look at. OK. Um, any more questions? Um, let me just give one last chance here. If anybody has one, don't be shy. I think maybe we're good to go. So um, once again, on behalf of Swaco, Christy, and myself, we appreciate you taking some time today. It's a, it's a 
fun part of our job is to see all these uh, great projects that come in the door. Uh, and uh, really, Christy is fabulous about kind of working directly with applicants or potential applicants to talk through and work through the details. So you really should take advantage of her time and experience um, and uh, great ideas uh, that she has to, to help with a successful application. So um, I don't see any more questions. Uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, please keep in touch. Thank you all so much. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.